my book of the month box just arrived and I'm so excited about it. I picked two books that sound amazing. The Fox Wife by Yang Zi Chu sounds super charming and magical. I also picked Neighbors and Other Stories by Diane Oliver. This has been called a newly discovered classic. It is a debut collection of stories but also her last as she passed away in 1966 and her stories have finally been published in 2024. I'm really excited about this one too. Book of the Month is a book subscription service that aims to help you discover books by new and debut authors that you wouldn't have found otherwise. There are five to seven books each month that you can choose from. You can also add an additional backlist book to your box at a discount and then the books get delivered right to your door in one of these really cute boxes. You still have time to get a February box. You can get either of these books or any of the other great picks for only $9.99 using the link in my description box and the code SMOOCH. Thank you so much Book of the Month for sponsoring today's video. I really love Book of the Month. <laughs> Okay, let's get into the painting. Today, I wanted to finally try out those Himi Mia jelly gouaches that are all over the internet. They are satisfying to look at, they're affordable, and you get a lot of paint. I consider myself to be a gouache artist. I've tried quite a few different brands of gouache at this point, and I guess I just want to know if these jelly gouaches are worth the hype and if I should be recommending them to people that are getting into gouache. So I hope this video is helpful or at the very least interesting. So I actually ordered these seven months ago and they have been sitting on my shelf. I've been too nervous to touch them. It comes with a little mixing palette. I'm really glad I got one that was white. I think some of the older sets have mixing palettes that are the same color as the box and that would just make mixing colors so difficult. So I'm glad we have a white palette. It also comes with some brushes. They're pretty cute. And here are all of the jelly gouaches. So they come in little cups like this. They do have all of the colors listed on the back. It also says that the shelf life is only 36 months. So, I mean, I guess isn't ideal, but they are pretty affordable. So let's open these all up. I think if you had fake nails, this would be impossible. <laughs> oh boy. So this one's like our cadmium red white, but I doubt they use cadmium for this. Maybe it's pyrrole red or something like that. Oh my goodness, this is a mess. This pale purple color is a little bit dry. So you can see the binder has sort of come to the top and it's quite yellowy. So I believe this white will yellow over time on your paintings. There we go. That was super messy. I have heard some people complain about this set uh, being, you know, easy to contaminate your colors. I'm not too concerned about that because I already work with my gouache pretty similarly. It's almost a homemade <laughs> jelly palette. So I'm pretty good at keeping it clean. So this format doesn't bother me too much. I am wondering if this lid is going to provide enough of a seal to keep these from drying out. And I'm also wondering, you know, how easy are they going to be to reactivate once they are dried out? Another big concern for me is that I have no idea what these pigments are. I have no idea how light fast they are. I think having the pigment information on your paints is super, super important to know how they're going to mix and how they're going to age. Each cup is 30 milliliters of gouache, which is a lot. I typically use either Winsor & Newton Holbein or Turner gouache. And the Winsor & Newton tubes are 14 milliliters and quite pricey, or can be depending on the pigment. And the Holbein tubes are 15 milliliters. And these are quite pricey where I am, the Holbein, but they are so beautiful. And the Turner gouache, which is the more affordable of the three, these are 25 milliliter tubes, which is a lot of paint, but apparently still less than these jelly cups. So we're getting a lot of paint here. Is the paint good? I don't know. We're going to try it out. Two more. 
half a wash here. I'm curious to see how quickly these dry and also if they dry evenly. Since they are cheaper, I'm expecting maybe some of the colors have a little bit of shine. I'm noticing the brush doesn't hold a lot of water. Okay, but on first impressions, I am more impressed with this paint than I thought I would be. I thought they would be a lot streakier and I thought they would have like a really gross, sticky consistency. So I've got the white paint here. There is a bit of lifting, but yeah, I think layering is a little trickier than with my other gouaches. I think I would have been able to get a nice flat white layer over this Prussian blue color. I'm gonna see if I can cover better with this. Yeah, so I find I find this to be a better white. Okay, so I wanted to test these out in my sketchbook to start. This is my Royal Talons art creation sketchbook. The paper isn't really meant to handle a lot of wet media, but I do often use gouache in these sketchbooks and I haven't had a problem. It would be so great if I could use the Himi gouache for quick sketches. That way I wouldn't have to use up my more expensive paints. That would be pretty cool. I started this little painting of a kettle. I realized while painting this that I really wish this set had a neutral gray. I use gray quite often to neutralize colors, to desaturate them. Even in portraits I find that having a gray is super handy, so it's a bit of a bummer that they didn't include one. I also really wish that this set had a Naples yellow sort of color. I think I would prefer if that light peachy color in the set was like a Naples yellow. I can't see myself reaching for that peachy color very often. But two colors that I really love in this set are, you can probably guess it if you've watched a number of my videos, but the lavender color. I love a good lavender. And I also really liked that periwinkle color. I ended up using the periwinkle color sort of in place of a neutral gray. So painting this little kettle was honestly really fun and I really like how the gouache went down on the paper. So at the end of this little study I was like, wow, okay this gouache is actually pretty good, I get it. And I sort of went into the portrait with that excitement and I think I was a little let down while doing the portrait, I'll talk a little bit more about that later. But so far I gotta say. The paint is a lot better than I expected. I also have a little bit of news. I wanted to share with you guys that I have opened a Patreon. If you are interested in supporting me over there, I have two tiers to start off with. We have a producer pals tier for $3 a month that is basically like a tip jar. You get access to behind the scenes posts on Patreon and producer credits in my videos. I'm also thinking about creating a discord but I have to look into that. And I also have a sketchbook pals tier where I will be uploading high res scans of all of my sketchbook pages that I've done at the end of each month so you can get a peek inside my sketchbook way before the sketchbook tours come out and all the sketches that I don't post on Instagram, which is most of them. <laughs> I wanted to let you know about that. I've had a few people ask me over the past year if I had a Patreon, and now I do. So if you'd like to support me in that way, you can head over to Patreon and join us over there if you want to. Otherwise, that's okay. Stick around here, subscribe to my YouTube channel, and yeah, I really appreciate that. Okay, so for me, the true test for any medium is, can I make a portrait with it? Is it going to be a good time? Is it going to work well for how I like to paint my portraits? So for this, I decided to do a portrait of Aragorn from Lord of the Rings. 
because I can only go so long without doing some sort of sketch or painting from Lord of the Rings. It was time, I had to, so yeah, that's all I have to say about that. I loved this reference in particular because of the way the sword plays a part in the composition. It almost feels like the sword is a portrait, just as much as Aragorn is. And also because the lighting is fantastic. The majority of the lighting on the subject is warm, the overall piece is very warm, but there's also a cool light source coming in from the right that just looks very cinematic, very interesting, and I thought it would be a joy to paint. So in the beginning of this painting process, I was struggling quite a bit, and there are a few reasons for this. One being that my brain wasn't at 100% that day. I remember I was feeling under the weather, and I don't know, when your body is not 100%, it's hard to be there 100% mentally. So I was kind of jumping around even more than usual. So what I did was I stopped painting for the day, and I went back at it the next day. But another reason that I was struggling was because of the biggest fault I see with these paints. Now this downside I don't think would necessarily be detrimental to all painters, but it really made it difficult to paint in my style or my manner of painting, and that is because the paints aren't super opaque. They're not as opaque as my more expensive gouache, and I kind of knew that going in. You know, there's going to be more binder than pigment, because they definitely aren't artist grade paints, and if they were, they'd have to charge more. So we know that, we know there's not going to be as much pigment. And one kind of silver lining about this quality of these paints is that you can do some pretty cool almost glazing effects like you would in oils. So without even watering down your paint, you can do glazes of color. But the big downside for me was that I felt like I had to go over the same area over and over again to get the opacity I wanted. And because of that, I found it was a lot harder to make impactful brush strokes. And that's one of my favorite things about how I paint. It's one of the, I guess, attributes of my style, you could say, is having interesting brush strokes and, you know, really focusing on the direction of these brush strokes. In certain areas, putting a brush stroke down and leaving it, not fussing with it, it has to be the perfect brush stroke, the right value, the right hue. If I can get that and leave it, I'm happy. I like how that looks. But with these paints, your brush strokes often demand to be fussed over because the opacity and the chroma just isn't there in one stroke unless you use a lot of paint and then you'd get sort of like a gunky thing and then you'd probably get cracking and that wouldn't be nice. <laughs> Don't get me wrong, you can make a good looking painting with these. You can make a great looking painting with these. I just find it more difficult to get the desired outcome that I want because of this lack of opacity and chroma in the paints. I think if you're someone that renders your paintings more, someone that wants a smoother, more, you know, like every area of the painting is really finished and, you know, you probably use smaller brushes than me and that's okay, then these paints I think would be great and you could do some really awesome work with them. But yeah, that's sort of my experience with these paints. I do want to say that I think they act differently than traditional gouache. I think they have some different properties, and I can't put my finger on all of them. Uh, one is the opacity, one is that I think the drying time is different. I also find that they don't layer in the same way as my other gouache. It's almost like they melt together, like the layers melt together more, even if I'm not using a lot of water. They act differently <laughs> than my other gouache paints, and I think that would be maybe an issue for a beginner gouache artist, especially if you are following gouache tutorials or gouache courses, or you know, even just one of my videos and you're like trying to get the same results that I'm getting, it's going to be hard because these jelly paints act differently, so it may be more difficult to learn. So in my opinion, a artist that is wanting to get into gouache 
would be better off getting three primary colors and a white from a brand like Winsor Newton, Holbein, or Turner. Turner is pretty inexpensive where I am. It's from Japan, but I order them from Above Ground in Toronto and they're about six bucks a tube for 25 milliliters, which is great. I would say, you know, it's not quite as luxurious as my Holbein paints, but they're really good and the opacity is there, the chrome is there, you know what pigments are in your paints. I know the big draw to the jelly paints is that you get so many colors and the packaging is really cute, but that's my opinion. I think it would be better to start with three primary colors and a white, maybe a burnt umber. If you get the Turner brand, it would end up being about the same price as a Hemi set. If you get Winsor Newton, it might be a little bit more, but the quality is going to be a lot better and it's going to act how gouache should act. So if you are following tutorials or trying to learn how to paint with gouache, it's going to be a lot easier for you. And it's also great to learn how to mix your own colors. So who do I recommend these paints for? I think they're really fun and the price is really hard to beat. So I think it would be good for people who are maybe more experienced with gouache that already know how gouache works. They go into it knowing that these are going to act differently. And they're good for quick studies in the sketchbook. We know these paints aren't going to be the most light fast and archival, so if they're in a sketchbook, they're going to be safe from the UV rays and they should age pretty well. I don't think I will be doing any finished paintings with these paints. I just don't think the quality is there and I don't want to sell something to somebody and have all the purples in the painting completely disappear. You could definitely do paintings and then sell prints or, you know, just be upfront about the materials used. But yeah, the nice brands of gouache, they can be expensive and the tubes are small and it can be hard to want to practice with those and use up those nice paints so it is nice to have this more affordable alternative for just sketches and having fun in my sketchbook so yes those are all of my thoughts on that i'd love to know what you guys think about this gouache if you've tried it or you know what just tell me what gouache you use what gouache you love if you use a different brand i haven't mentioned i'd love to hear about it I think that is it for this video. I really hope you enjoyed. I want to thank Book of the Month once again for sponsoring today's video, and I want to thank my channel members and my patrons over on Patreon. If you want to see high-res scans of my sketchbook pages every month, you can become a patron on Patreon. And for everyone else, I will see you all very, very soon with another video. Bye-bye!